You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Are you ready, Georgia? I'm ready. Senator Raphael Warnock claims victory in the race for Georgia's U.S. Senate seat. What's next as he gets ready to head back to Washington? First this morning, the voters have spoken and Senator Warnock will continue to serve as their voice in Congress for the next six years. Liza Lucas is following what's next for the senator now that that runoff campaign is finally over. Senator Warnock says the work starts today and he is ready for a return to Washington. His victory in Georgia is significant for 2023 and Democrats agenda. Winning the seat gives Democrats a true majority in the U.S. Senate and more leverage to pass legislation. But bipartisanship will also be key. Last night, Senator Warnock echoed his promise to work across the aisle and work for Georgia. You have put in the hard work and here we are standing together. The senator says to expect more in terms of job creation, criminal justice reform, and his effort to lower prescription costs in the next session. In the meantime, I'm sending it back to you. The 11 Alive team is also taking a dive into the numbers. Our team coverage continues with Jerry Carnes. He's in the studio with us. Breaking down county by county voter turnout. And Jerry, what are you seeing? Well, Raphael Warnock was able to win this election by once again winning the metropolitan areas, the most populous areas of Georgia. And he did it this time uh, by doing it by a wider margin than he did in November. For example, you see all of the metro Atlanta counties that went for uh, Raphael Warnock there in blue there. In Gwinnett County, he won once again, but this time his margin of victory over Herschel Walker was 4% more than it was in November. Columbus, margin of victory was wider. In Augusta, the margin of victory was wider. In Savannah, Chatham County, Warnock won with 61.9% of the vote. That's 2% more than he got in November. Two Georgia counties actually flipped from one candidate to another, and in both cases, it was a flip from Herschel Walker to Raphael Warnock. We're talking about Baldwin County. That is the city of Milledgeville, as well as Washington County. Both counties went for Walker in November, and as you can see, Warnock won both of them this time around in the runoff. A lot to break down there. Thank you, Jerry. Your post-election coverage will continue at 7 a.m. with the Today Show, and they'll be following the major moments from this race. That's right here after 11 Alive Morning News. And you will also be able to check this out online for results and more election analysis. Just visit 11alive.com. Developing this morning in DeKalb, a man is fighting for his life after a shootout at a gas station and police are still trying to piece together what happened as this investigation continues. Molly Oak has the latest. Police believe some kind of argument started and then two people each pulled guns and started shooting. It happened around 620 yesterday evening off Reedon Road near a BP gas station. When officers got here, they found a man between 18 and 24 years old who was shot. He's hospitalized with serious injuries. Yesterday, you could see the BP taped off, and at least one car had both its driver and passenger windows shattered. And while police are still investigating, we also learn more details about this area. The Chevron across the street has had multiple people shot, and within the last year, police tell us they've responded to shootings within just a couple miles of this location. Guys. Continuing your 11 minutes of nonstop news with the latest on the search for a teen mother in DeKalb County. Yeah, they're looking for 15 year old Junia and police say her one year old daughter, Amani, has been found safe. They say the teen was last seen leaving her Decatur home on Friday. While police haven't released many details about her disappearance, they're asking people to call their special victims unit with any information. An Atlanta police officer still recovering this morning after being hit by a suspected drunk driver. Officer Robert Golden was running after a man on Jonesboro Road when the driver hit both of them. A GoFundMe has been set up for Officer Golden and has already raised more than $12,000. The suspected drunk driver is still in the Fulton County Jail facing several charges. Clayton County School Superintendent Dr. Morcise Beasley says he will step down from his position next week. His last day is December 16th. It's also the final day of the semester. After that, Dr. Anthony Smith will take over as interim superintendent. Dr. Smith has held a number of positions within the district over the years and most recently served as deputy superintendent. An Atlanta City Council member is now offering new insight into some ways he thinks can make the city safer. Antonio Lewis says one idea that could work is encouraging parents to lock up their guns. We give away these lock boxes for free. We teach people how to use them. 
uh, that actually removes an entire element from the city of Atlanta. That takes guns out of kids' hands. He's proposing handing out these free lock boxes in front of city council. He also wants to reintroduce the Youth Promise Act, which would fund organizations working with young black men in Atlanta. Councilman Lewis hopes the vote on that legislation on January 2nd. Happening today, a company focused on cutting down on waste and wiping out hunger is setting up and setting up shop in Georgia once again. This is amazing. So Gooder is opening its second grocery store within a Georgia school after teaming up with the city of Powder Springs. The new store is being unveiled today at Tap Middle School in Powder Springs. The Gooder store is going to provide free access to groceries for about 900 students that attend Tap and also their families. They can pick up whatever they need throughout the school year. Gooder and Powder Springs officials will host a ribbon cutting that's Celebrate the opening this morning. Gooder, I like it. All right, so this forecast is not so much gooder. We're looking at uh, clouds. They're going to stay in place, and the chance for rain will stay in place as well, although it's a little better chance as we head toward the evening. 68 degrees will be our temperature by noon, going up into the 70s today. I'm thinking right around 72 degrees for a forecast high, so much warmer than we uh, have been. Southwest wind about 7 miles per hour. By 6 o'clock, expect a little better chance for some showers to be around. They'll be scattered at best. Light for the most part, maybe a moderate pocket or two. 69 degrees will be your temperature by 6 o'clock tonight. So viewers don't know, people in news typically celebrate the end of election night with pizza. Mm. But when you work the morning show, we get breakfast. We get breakfast. Ooh, for real? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're ready. Anything We're hungry. I Anything I can eat? Nope. I think so. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Ariana's